Anthropic has finally, after a slight delay, Anthropic has released Claude 3 Haiku, the fastest and cheapest of the new Claude 3 models. We're going to be testing it with, against Claude 3 Sonnet and Claude 3 Opus today to see how they compare in addition to its lower price point. So let's get into it. All right, so there are two main ways that those of you who follow my channel probably want to access Claude. The first is through Claude's own interface here through, they have a free version, which gives you access to the cheaper models. I'm not sure yet if it gives you access to Claude 3 Haiku. I assume it would, uh, but since I don't have a free account, I can't actually verify that. But if you have a paid account, it gives you access to Claude 3 Opus, which is their most powerful model. We're going to be testing all three uh, with a couple of different prompts to, so we can see the difference. The other way that you might be accessing it is through Novel Crafter or through, by extension, Open Router. If you access through Open Router, that gets pulled into Novel Crafter. And so that basically when you go to Generate Pros, you have access to different Claude models. We have Claude 3 Opus and Sonic here. Additionally, you can go and find Claude 3 Haiku here as well. So all three are accessible inside of Novel Crafter this time. But before we get to Novel Crafter, let's go back to Claude Pro and test all three using just a simple brainstorming prompt. So this is the prompt we're going to use. Give me 20 log lines for lit RPG novel using the log line template from Blake Snyder's Save the Cat. Make sure the log line has a sense of irony. And we're going to go ahead and run it with Haiku first to see how it does. All right, Haiku gave us this response and it was very fast. You didn't see it, but it generated this extremely quickly and we have options like a down on his luck office worker with no gaming skills must become a legendary gamer to save his virtual world from a tyrannical ai overlord despite his crippling carpal tunnel syndrome okay that's got a good sense of irony there for sure a group of hapless office friends find themselves trapped in a realistic mmorpg where the real world weaknesses become their only path to victory a shy bookish student inadvertently becomes the most powerful image in a virtual fantasy realm, but must learn to embrace her inner warrior to defeat a horde of treacherous ne neckbeards. Okay, so not bad, actually. It followed the prompt very carefully. It included the irony. I was testing this without that mention of irony in the past, and it did okay, but not super amazing. Adding just that sentence of making sure it has irony really changed the output quite significantly, which goes to show that prompt engineering is still super important, as you can get much better results with just tweaking your prompt here and there. But let's go ahead and do another chat, run the exact same message. This time we're going to use Claude 3 Sonnet. All right, so it gave us a couple. These are a little bit shorter, and it was fast, not as fast as Haiku, but still pretty good. A hardcore gamer who mocks lit RPG novels gets trapped in one, forcing him to embrace the genre he ridiculed to survive. That's kind of cool. I like the irony there. When a struggling author's experimental lit RPG novel becomes a reality-bending reality cosmic glitch, he must embark on the adventure he created to fix the universe. A brilliant programmer's lit RPG game unexpectedly traps her inside her own creation, leaving her to navigate a world she designed but never truly understood. Okay, so these are fine. I wouldn't say these are any better or worse than what we got with Haiku. So, so that's pretty cool. Let's see if we see any better results from using Claw 3 Opus. So we'll use the same prompt here and see what it gives us. All right, so we have number one here. On the verge of losing his job, a struggling accountant must become the hero of a fantasy world to save his company, only to discover the game is more real than he ever imagined. Not actually that great. A pacifist is forced to play a hyper-violent VR game to pay off her student loans. Oh, I like that. I like that. But her unconventional approach to problem solving turns her into an unlikely champion. I actually like this one quite a bit. It's very unique. In a world where gaming determines social status, a noob must navigate a treacherous virtual landscape to rescue his sister who's been kidnapped by an elite guild. Eh, that one's pretty generic. So looking through these, like there are some hidden gems in this, but I actually think that Haiku and Sonnet did slightly better for the brainstorming prompt, which is interesting to me that it would do that. Okay. So that's interesting. Let's try something a little bit more on the marketing side. Let's do something like some email headlines. I'm going to take this second option that I got from Claude 3 Opus that I actually really liked. And we're going to take this and try to generate a few headlines for that. All right, and this is the prompt we're going to use. Using the following book description, come up with 20 headlines for a Facebook ad trying to convince people to buy this book. The headline must have a strong hook and be interesting. And then we have the book description below. So let's try this first with Claude 3 Haiku and see what it gives us. 
Okay, so it gave us some headlines for sure, but these are very generic headlines. So drowning in debt? This pacifist crazy VR hack will change your life. Uh, that's not even like making it sound like it's a fictional thing. Pacifist forced to play brutal VR game. You won't believe what happened next. That's like a parody of a headline. So this is actually kind of making it sound like this is like we're trying to draw in real people here. That may be an issue with the prompt, but let's go ahead and try it with Claude 3 Sonnet and see if it gives us something similar. Okay, this is definitely much more understanding that this is a book that we're trying to sell. We're not actually trying to sell the whole VR thing. So it's recognizing that this is a fictional thing. Pacifist battles bloody virtual reality to, to escape student loan hell. That's actually not too bad. I would use that in a Facebook ad. Her only weapons were wits, one woman's unconventional path to gaming glory. When Peacemaker met Deathmatch, an unlikely tale of virtual triumph. Loaning for Survival, How a Pacifist Conquered the Violent VR Realm. I don't know why so many of the headlines that AI generates have this, you know, quick headline here, then a colon, then like a subtitle. Uh, I don't actually think those are, that makes a good headline, but it does it a lot. Flowery Child Wins Championship by Playing Murderously. Uh, that's, like, I'm not really sure what that's saying, but it's it's a better headline for sure. So, okay, Sonnet definitely wins over Haiku for headlines. Let's try one more time with Opus. Okay, so something interesting I see about Opus is it's creating shorter headlines, for one, slightly shorter, which is usually a good thing. You want your headlines to be short and quick and to the point. And they're very similar to Sonnet, but I'd say maybe a little more succinct. So we have Pacifist Turned Gaming Champion, A Thrilling Tale of Survival. That one's not really good, but this one is okay. Unconventional Problem Solving in a Hyperviolent World. Student Debt Drives Pacifist to Conquer Virtual Reality. Battling student loans in a brutal virtual reality. Like, that's cure. That makes me, that's a hook. That makes me want to read that. So, yeah, there's some good ones in here. Certainly not all of them. I'd say there, there has been a progression in quality on all three of these models. IQ definitely didn't work for this particular use case, but Sonnet was good and Opus was maybe slightly better, but still Sonnet was probably good enough here to get the idea and to get you going. But let's test one more specifically. Let's go to Novel Crafter to do this one. We're going to test basically a super prompt. And in in because in Novel Crafter, the way it works is it's pulling information about your characters. It's pulling information about the, the story so far in your book, everything that you've done so far, a brief summary of, of the story. It's pulling in the last couple hundred words of your story. So it's able to write in a consistent style. And one thing that we've actually discovered from testing Opus, I've actually noticed a lot of people have come to me saying that it doesn't, that Claude 3 Opus hasn't been that phenomenal. And yet for me, like it's night and day different. But a lot of people are saying that it's like just like GPT-4 and I cannot for the life of me understand that, but I think I got it. When you are just asking it to write a story just verbatim and, and not give it a whole lot of context and samples of your work, yes, the writing is not great. It's pretty generic. It has a lot of the sort of chat GPT-isms that I've come to expect in AI writing. But Claude 3, especially Claude 3 Opa, seems to be very good at responding to prompts in a way that GPT-4 is not. For instance, if I give it a sample chapter of my writing, it writes much more closely to my style than if I didn't give it a sample chapter of my writing. Additionally, if you give it your style prompts and everything, it's much more respondent to style prompts and actually changes things significantly based on your style prompt. Adding in all of the context that Novel Crafter just automatically dumps in there really seems to help everything move along. So uh, we're gonna be using this prompt. It's basically continuing this scene that is half written right here. So this is all this is all automatically been written and edited heavily by me. So it's much more in consistency with my style. It was originally generated with AI, but I edited it enough that I'm pretty confident that it sounds like me and like I would want it to sound. So we'll see if the results from these three models end up being significantly different from each other that we're gonna be using. Now, of course, it's creating a huge super prompt on the back end. But this is ultimately what I wanted to write. The officers are shocked when Mina explains stopping the smugglers. When she insists, the police assure her that the children will be taken care of, ideally finding their original home so they can be returned or finding them new homes among benefactors in London. So let's go ahead and generate this with Haiku. First of all, it's generating extremely quickly here, which is awesome. 
And the beauty about this is if you're using Claude 3 through Open Router, you're paying it for it by the word, which means that if you're using a model like Haiku or Sonnet, you're going to be paying a lot less than if you're using Opus. So there is an advantage to using these smaller. All right, so this is what we got from Haiku. I'm just going to label this. Haiku. Amina Harker strode through the police station doors, a small girl clutched in her arms and the other rescued children trailing behind her. The officer at the front desk stared eyes wide as Amina approached. Please, you must help, Mina said, her voice urgent. I've stopped a group of child smugglers in the alley just down the street. These poor children were trapped in crates waiting to be taken away. The officer blinked, processing her words. Child smugglers, you say? He glanced at the group of frightened children gathering around Mina. Yes, you please, you must send someone to apprehend them at once, Mina insisted. There were at least half a dozen men all working to load the children into a wagon. Okay, so it's not too bad, honestly. Like, And considering how cheap this model is, it's actually really good. It's a little bit blockish, like, you know, the, this person says something, then this person says something, and there's no, like, really good flow of the text. So we're going to go ahead and try this with Claude 3 Sonnet, see if it gets any better. Mina strode through, and this is what we got from Sonnet. Mina strode into the police station, a small girl clutched in her arms and a trail of wide-eyed children following behind her. The officer at the front desk looked up, his eyes widening at the bizarre procession. I need to report a group of smugglers, Mina said calmly, shifting the girl to her other hip. They were transporting these children in grace, likely to sell them into servitude or worse. The officer's mouth hung open for a moment before he regained his composure. But miss, are you saying you stopped a gang of kidnappers single-handedly? Single Mina simply nodded. I left the man in the alley a few blocks from here. You'll want to send officers to collect them. Definitely way better than Haiku, for sure. There's, there's things that kind of just make it feel like the scene is coming alive, like how Mina shifts the girl to the other hip, right? Like, that's great. Um, the dialogue is not quite so forced. You, you can tell Mina has a certain emotion. She's much more calm and collected like she should be. So definitely 100% will take Sonic, Sonnet over Haiku, although I'm sure Haiku is great for certain things. So last but not least, let's compare this against Claude 3 Opus. All right. All right, this is what Opus gave us. The officer at the front desk stared at Mina, his eyes widening as he took in the ragged children clustered around her. Good heavens, madam, what is the meaning of this? Now, already I can tell it's followed the prompt a little bit better. If we look at what Sonnet gave us, it started us with Mina strode into the police station, a small girl clutched in her arms and a trail of wide-eyed children following behind her. Uh, whereas, actually, the sentence before this says the nearest police station was only a few blocks away and Mina was soon striding through its door, so she's already stri stridden striding, whatever, through the doors, the officer at the front stared at her. So we've already established the scene a little bit, and Opus did a better job at sort of starting where the scene just left off. So then it goes on, Mina met his gaze steadily. I discovered these children being smuggled in crates by groups of men. I incapacitated the smugglers and brought the children here for safety. The officer blinked, clearly taken aback. You stop them yourself, but how? He shook his head. Never mind that now. Let's get these little ones settled and you can give me the full story. As the other officers began gently ushering the children into a back room, providing them with blankets and warm drinks, Mina recounted the events in the alley. She was careful to leave out details of her vampiric abilities, simply stating that she had caught the smugglers by surprise. So this definitely feels like a more fleshed out scene. There's more details. The officers are like providing the children with blankets and warm drinks. The dialogue maybe is still a little bit AI-ish. Uh, but that would be easily remedied, I'd, I'd say. Um, on the whole, I'd say this is an improvement on Sonnet, but not by a whole lot. Not as much as Sonnet was an improvement on Haiku, but definitely an improvement. So you could probably get away with using Sonnet if you're concerned about the cost, but I would say Opus is still a little bit better on the whole. So clearly we've established that Haiku is not as powerful as the other two, which was expected, right? It's cheaper, it's faster. But what would actually be a situation where we might want to use Haiku instead of, say, Opus? Well, for instance, all three of these, Haiku included, have a 200,000 token limit, which means it can process about 150,000 words. So if you need it to do stuff that processes large amounts of material and you're not so concerned about the quality of the prose that it gives out, then you might want to use Haiku instead because it'll be a lot cheaper and a lot faster. For instance, I have a prompt that takes a chapter and turns it into a summary plus some information about characters and world building. It's one of my prompts that I use to summarize a book into all of the component parts I need to create a story bible. 
Uh, I've done videos on this in the past. So if I wanted to take this whole chapter, for example, and summarize it into a story Bible summary, uh, which I have already created here as a prompt, and again, go find that video uh, on creating story Bibles in Novel Crafter. So now I click on story Bible summary to do this prompt and I select haiku. And because this is a summarization prompt, which even the lower end models tend to be pretty good at, I can go ahead and use that and save a lot of money doing that whole summarization. So now I've got this whole thing here. The scene depicts the final confrontation between Van Helsing, Quincy, and Dracula. It summarizes everything correctly here. The characters, we have Van Helsing, the viewpoint character. Uh, and it's, yeah, it did the job perfectly here. The scene takes place in the courtyard of Dracula's castle. So it got everything that I wanted it to catch in here. And that's the, the perfect example of where you might want to use haiku as opposed to sonnet or opus. Because while sonnet and opus could probably do this just as well, it would cost a lot more to do so. So that is just a brief glimpse at why you would want to use a cheaper and faster model, because there are certain things that it is better at. And if you wanted, you could take your whole book and summarize it this way, and then you have a pretty cheaply made template to use in your story Bible. So that's the general idea there. I hope that gives you a decent look at Haiku and these other models and uh, gives you an idea of which one you want to use for which. Now, before I go on, I want to also mention that my membership is actually, it's not closing down. I've decided not to close it down anymore, uh, but I am raising the price as of tonight. So the moment you see this, go check that out. I have basically, if you join the membership now, you will get two of my books for free. I have complete, this is the only way to get those books. I, they are not published anywhere else. You will also get a fine tuned model and I'm preparing a couple of other fine tuned models of my own that I'm just gonna share with my membership. And those you can get for free inside the membership along with instructions on how to install it and use it in a tool like Novel Crafter. You'll also get a whole bunch of courses and then every week now, uh, I've made a change to the membership, so every week I'm going live and answering your questions and giving you some pretty awesome information in those presentations. So if you want to check that out, go ahead. The link is down below. And again, that ends tonight at the current price. So if you want to get in at the current price and keep that price for as long as you keep the membership, so basically forever, then you can, you can do that. Otherwise, tomorrow it will be up in price. So definitely check that out, and I will see you in the next video.